Hi. The next object I would like to discuss for ritual use is the fire bowl. The fire bowl is, as you can see, just a container with a fire in it. Simple enough. But mystically and magically it is a very important thing. The fire itself is very much the symbol of the higher power of transformation. So it is in a way also representing uh, the soul, the spirit. And what it is fed with are lower things. Things from the earth, from the elements, which are sacrificed to it. So the fire itself is very much a symbol of the dominance of the spirit and also of the power of the spirit to in a way evolve out of the matter because the matter decays but the spirit is actually fed by its life so in a way you could say that we are ourselves a fireball we are living and as we live we burn up our bodies but while we burn up our bodies, our spirit is nourished by the lives we lead. It gets fed, so the fire continues or even grows stronger if we lead a very spiritually fulfilling life. The shape of the fire bowl can be of importance as well. Um, here the fire bowl is basically a very round bowl. But you can have them in many different shapes and forms and also of many different metals. And each of them has a slightly different effect. As the fireball is ultimately the, you could say, the, the, the oven, the heart where the transformation takes place. And by making it of a different material or of a different shape, you ask different powers to guide the process of transformation. So, for instance, if we make it by iron, iron is the metal of the planet Mars, it is all about strength, all about power. So if I would sacrifice something in an iron bowl, I would in a way say, like, okay, take this sacrifice, what I'm burning, and turn it into power, turn it into strength, turn it into stability. But, if, for instance, if we have a bowl here, uh, which is made of copper or messing. It's already very different. It becomes about movement, about unblocking things, about connecting, about communication. So then it is already much more of a healing bowl rather than a strengthening bowl. Bowls can also be made of stone, although it's a little bit risky to heat stone. I've seen some people try it and usually after a few heatings the bowls tend to crack. Sometimes it takes longer, sometimes it takes shorter depending on the heat coefficient of the stone which is used as close as possible to zero. It gives less stress to the stone. Um, but in general I can't say that I really enjoy working with the stone bowls or the stone pits. The principle of the stone is that it is, of course, uh, the Mother Earth and that it is the Earth's power or the collective consciousness which is carrying the process or using the process. And for me, somehow it always feels as it being a little bit double or superfluous because we ourselves are part of this collective consciousness all our powers and experience flow back into the collective consciousness and come out of the collective consciousness every time we are reborn. Um, so I don't think that using the earth in that way adds things to it. Um, if however you use the earthen bowl to work with the ancestral spirits, that would make sense. Um, because they are in a very selective part of that collective consciousness and using a bowl to invite a certain ancestor or group of ancestors yeah, cannot be done in other ways rather than using indeed uh, a stone object uh, to call them forth. Um, if you do that it would be actually interesting to also have some water there because the water 
is the other element. And having this combination of the water and the fire, we also have the two transformation of the two cleansing elements there. The water element is the one which in a way cleanses the body and cleanses also the life force and the lower energies. The fire is the higher element which in a way cleanses the spirit. So by having these two dual baptisms, the baptism of water and the baptism of fire, both the lower part of the energy is purified and transmuted and the higher part of the energy is purified and transmuted and only if, yeah, if you have both transmutations you get a completely new beginning because otherwise if you purify only the body but the spirit remains foul then ultimately the body will fall back into decay and in the same way if you purify the spirit but the body is uncleansed the body becomes a trap for the spirit from which it will find it very hard to free itself. So to have a true transformational baptism you need both elements. And it is the same also if you want to do a ritual where you want to give a person a new start, a new beginning. Uh, then you want to have both elements there and preferably also the karmatic powers which can be the ancestors or the um, the victims and friends from people from their previous incarnations uh, and of course the different gods and goddesses which guided them to the place where they are now and which will guide them into the future. So if you are doing rituals of these nature it is very nice if you have both a fire bowl there and a water bowl there to take away the past lives and past tendencies of both the body and the spirit. So the person can really have a new beginning. The fire bowl is also very nice for people to make their own contributions in, to make their own sacrifices in. Um, so for instance if you have a, um, a, a Yule ritual where it is very much about needing each other's strength, needing each other's power to build a collective, to build a community and surviving through the strength of the community and giving to the community and benefiting from the community then of course a central fire is very essential to that so everybody could and should bring something which is something they are contributing to the community and share it with the others by giving it to the fire and thereby their essence is transformed and it becomes higher and thereby also available to all because if a piece of knowledge a piece of skill a talent is locked within me only I have control over it and I can become more or less of a monopolist with it but by sharing it in a Yule ritual and putting it in the fireball I'm saying my knowledge is not mine it belongs to humanity, it belongs to the community, it belongs to the group. It is there for all to use and I am just a conduit by which this power, which is a power of the community, of the collective, can channel itself through me for the benefit of all. So this is also very much a method of separating the self, the ego, the selfish or egotistical viewpoint from certain power, certain talents and other identifications which may happen because power is power, it doesn't belong to you you just connect yourself to it and help it to manifest but it is not yours you're just a hollow bone, a conduit through which the breath of the power, the breath of the spirit flows and the fireball can help you to remember that, to purify your own energy channels by sacrificing what is personal, what is self and then only the higher parts remain because they cannot be burned, they are already on these high levels 
So for self-purification and detachment it is a very good tool to write down all the things you think you are and burn them and let go of all these false identifications, of all these false egos. And it's also very popular for people to burn wishes, to burn prayers. And it is a way, of course, for the essence of what you put in it to be transformed, to become visible in higher worlds. But it's also good to remember that it is indeed only the essence of your wish which is visible in the higher worlds, not the exact manifestation. So you cannot say like, okay, Monday morning at 8 o'clock uh, I want this and this to happen. Because this is about manifestation and if you sacrifice it, all those specific earthbound details, time, place, they will disappear. What remains is the essence of it. What do you want to happen? What type of transformation is it about? What type of consciousness, of knowledge is it about? Who are you reaching out to? Who will pick it up? And this is the art of burning something, of feeling where it should go. Who should answer your wish? Putting an energy in it which will guide the transformed wish up to its source. If I just write stuff down and burn it, it will go into the cosmos. And it is of course possible that something in the cosmos will pick it up and will do something with it. But it's important if you make a wish uh, that you in a way focus it. Like if you're wishing something for yourself, put your energy on it, put your name on it. If you're wishing it for somebody else, put their name on it or put an item of them together with it. You can burn maybe a piece of hair, some fingernail clippings. Uh, you can spit on it before you throw it in to connect it with your energy so that even though the lower parts dissipate, that it is clear that the energy which is sent upward should manifest down towards you or towards the other person whose focus you used before putting it into the fireball. So, I hope this helps a little bit in understanding how the elements of water and fire can be used in your rituals. I wish you good luck with it. Much success.